My name is Christo Tanif. I am uh, working in the Joint Research Center and I'm going to talk uh, today to you about news processing. What we are doing in the area of news processing, the Europe Media Monitor and the event extraction inside the Europe Media Monitor. So I, uh, I have uh, written some intro about uh, the news processing. Um, the modern people are exposed to enormous uh, quantities of information nowadays. However, most of the info which crosses our senses and brains do not is not really relevant to us. We do need information tools which allow us to concentrate on our lives, restricting the information we process and at the same time staying informed about the things which are important for us and uh, the society. News are written partially to inform us, partially to create opinion in us, and they, uh, and they create in us a sense of belonging to some extent to the society. News reflect the rhythm of the daily life, makes us part of the big events in the world, and they expand our horizons and often challenge our intelligence and our moral values because we have to evaluate what happens in the news. We have to, to give estimation about what happens in the news. You have to take a position. The news give us opportunity to think about the problems of the world and to feel its citizens, and at the same time they can, uh, they, they can the excessive news consumption can make you even neurotic. It is our responsibility to filter the interesting and useful information and to organize our personal information stream. News monitoring system help us with this and they restrict the information which we consume and prevent us from information overload. News monitoring system help us stay informed, help us dealing with interesting for us uh, news rather than uh, irrelevant ones. And news monitoring tools are especially relevant for, uh, for decision makers, for experts, for analysts, for students and researchers. And to, to all people who want to have focused view on the news stream. So I'm going to talk about the uh, EMM, which is uh, the in-house uh, information processing uh, tool of the European Commission. Uh, Europe Media Monitor. It processes news in 70 languages. It finds entities and trends inside the news. And uh, this is this is the uh, first page of our of news brief. News brief is our flagship uh, product. It clusters the news uh, from 5,000 news sources. We have 24,000 news uh, every day, and we cluster them using. Uh, uh, LSA using uh, different clustering techniques, statistical clustering techniques, and the results are the news clusters which you can see. These are the biggest news clusters, which means these are the biggest news stories which, uh, which we can detect. So these are the most important news stories, and these are, um, these are topics which we uh, capture inside, uh, in automatically inside, uh, inside the news. So you see, you have agriculture, rural, rural development, fundamental rights, competition, EU foreign affairs and security policy, uh, health and food security, and etc., etc. This is uh, <laughs> boom. So this was uh, this is a page which is received as a result uh, um, of uh, of the of uh, the name entity recognition system. Basically, our name entity, uh, name, entity, uh, name entity recognition system is multilingual, so it recognizes name entities in, in in many different languages, and then it puts together the name entities which belong, which are attached to a certain personality, in in the same cluster. So you can see here automatically uh, automatically generated page for Federica Mogherini. You have the named the name entities which are uh, about Federica Mogherini. You have its uh, its titles like Minister of the External Affairs because she was Minister of the External Affairs, and uh, she is Italian. She is Chef de Diploma de, de Diplomacia de Unione Europea. And you have some 
title in Bulgarian language. And here you have the people who are related to Federica Mogherini. These are the people who have been who have been mentioned inside the text together with the name of Federica Mogherini. So uh, these are related people. We, we build automatic profiles of these uh, personalities which are mentioned in the news. So don't worry, you, there is no page about you because this is about <laughs> only people who are in the news. And so these are politicians, these are people who in any case want to be famous, so we don't think we violate anyone's rights. So, currently MM is being used by the analysts of the European Commission and other international organizations and member states. MM gathers around uh, 22,000 news per day, uh, 220 uh, news per day from 5,000 online sources. The news represent the major newspapers from the all countries in the world with strong focus on Europe. We have 56 news sources from Switzerland and we also monitor in social media, uh, mostly Twitter, for recurrent hashtags named in shared links. Um, these are the most important applications which, which are implemented inside uh, Europe uh, Media Monitor. You have News Brief, which is our main application. It, it shows the main news stories. We have Medicis, which is uh, our medical application, medical, medical news processing application. We have News Explorer, which provides more strategic news analysis. News Desk is a uh, tool for internal use. EMM Maps is mobile app uh, for interfacing EMM. And we have Citizen Science, which is a project which collects uh, news from the area of science and technology. There are two information extraction technologies implemented in EMM. It is name entity recognition and event metadata extraction. We detect and extract metadata from articles from the area of security, disasters, and health. Uh, the, our multilingual system for event detection Nexus has been used in the African Union headquarters in the European Agency for Border Control Frontex and it is also part of the Europe Media Monitor currently. Nexus is a software system which has been designed to work in multilingual settings. It is, uh, is rule-based, exploits local grammar rules to perform syntactic and semantic analysis of the text. It uses a large system of keyword combinations to classify the text into categories. Now, uh, this is, these are the types of the events which we manage to uh, detect inside our event detection system. We have on the top of the hierarchy crisis event, then you have disaster. We can detect natural disasters, man-made disasters, like, and security-related events, which is the focus of our system. We detect juridical type of events, kidnapping type of events, violent crimes, military events, social-political events like protests, riots, and strike, and also border events. Also, we are uh, detecting humanitarian crises, and we detect also medical events. Medical events are in a separate system, which is called uh, Medicis, and uh, it, is, it is running in parallel to, to EMM. So here is an example of an extracted event. Uh, we have uh, event type armed conflict, the dead people, the number of the dead, uh, the, the injured, the number of injured, the perpetrators, and the target. So the text is this, attack on army post in Afghanistan kills six soldiers. So basically the system has analyzed this piece of text, has taken, using uh, language, uh, language rules, has taken this phrase six soldiers, and has analyzed it, then it puts in the template soldiers are dead, their number is six, and uh, the same for injured, the same for perpetrator, and the same for the target. So in this example, the system has detected ammunition as weapon, which is not completely correct because, as a matter of fact, this was a stolen, uh, something which was stolen uh, from, by the Taliban. So it was not, it is not really, um, it's not really a weapon, but it was rather some, an object in which they were interested. And uh, this is uh, a man-made disaster detected in Italian language. So the text of the news is this, Roma motocicletista mori in incident in la Galleria Giovanni, uh, Giovanni 23. The event type is man-made disaster, the death is ragazzo di 31 anni, 
and this is uh, the type of the event is uh, is an accident. The, the system has found that the most important snippet is this one because it contains information about the victim of this incident. And uh, we're detecting also border, border security events. So for example, this one is in, in Italian. Uh, we have detected that there is illegal entry, there is, there is illegal stay, and there is smuggling. And uh, the system can detect certain meta information, who are the people who, who did uh, the illegal entry, who did illegal stay, etc. What was the object uh, which was smuggled, etc., etc. Et I will not stop long. Uh, I will not stop long uh, on this on this slide because, as a matter of fact, this slide shows the internal EMM uh, uh, EMM architecture. Wh what I wanted just to show is that we do real time news clustering. We perform entity recognition. We do also summarization inside this system. Uh, we do cross lingual cluster linking, so which means that we have clusters in different languages and we, we can connect them. This is done uh, using uh, different kind of uh, multilingual text classifiers and we extract categories which, are, which we model across languages. Then we detect breaking news ba based on the speed of the cluster growth and uh, sometimes we can send SMS and, e and, and emails to the, to the analysts and to the decision makers when there is upstream, fast upstream in some news cluster, which means that something is happening and we, are, we want to, to, to give the news to the people who are interested in that. So finally, we have uh, stories, which are clusters, and we perform event, extract, event extraction on the top of these stories. So the event extraction is one of, is on the top of all that. This is the Nexus, the event extraction pipeline. We have a news cluster. We have tokenization, sentence splitting, detection of victims, perpetrators, targets, uh, via grammars. We use event type detection via keyword combinations and event template filling. Finally, the product of the event uh, extraction is an event template, which contains information about the dead, the injured, and the displaced. So, tokenization and sentence splitting are done via in-house system for shell processing. Sentence splitter uses a list of words like doctor or professor, which cannot appear at the end of a sentence. Then, using grammars, we manage to detect information about this, uh, this type of information. We manage to find who are killed, who are injured, who are the perpetrators, who are arrested, who are displaced. We find the targets of the attack and the weapons which are used inside these attacks. Then this is, uh, uh, this, this is a rule which uh, basically we use two level finite state grammars in order to detect information about, this, uh, the, uh, about the victims of the, uh, of, of the conflicts. So we have uh, here a rule which recognizes a name and then also recognizes um, think like one, two million people and uh, 12 other people. So name, this is our, um, our in-house syntactic and semantic uh, analyzer. So we have uh, in-house system express for uh, building of grammars and for executing them. This is an action rule which uh, takes two noun phrases which refer to people and exports and exports uh, the semantic structures which, are, uh, which, which describe the victim of, uh, of an injury event. We have uh, many rules inside this system and uh, if someone asks why we, why we are uh, using rule-based methods while the people are actually, everyone is using statistical, uh, statistical approaches. It's very simple. A statistical approach, you cannot correct an error in a statistical model. When there is, except if you don't train, if you don't retrain uh, the whole model. So, for example, if you have uh, if you have an error uh, and you want to you want to detect a certain type of construction, and this construction is not in in the list of the constructions you have, you should. Uh, if if you're using statistical methods, you cannot really 
you have to retrain the whole model, while in our case you just change the rule and we change the lexicon. So um, back, to the, back to the event detection, we're feeling finally this kind of templates. We're feeling the type, uh, which uh, in this text, for example, we will feel the event type, which is bombing, we feel the event location, the time, the count of the deaths, the description of the death, and the weapons, which in this case is, is a bomb. So this is the final event template, which, which we finally extract from the news. Um, the system is using here the tools and the rules I, I have shown. And basically, it is applying uh, uh, linguistic, uh, simple linguistic patterns, which says if there is killing and a noun phrase which refer to people, then extract this noun phrase. And in, in this case, it is uh, at least 10 people, and these 10 people are victim. In, as a matter of fact, most of the examples are much more complex, and uh, we, ha we have more complex uh, rules uh, w w which can deal with more complex uh, language constructions. And uh, finally, we arrive to event type detection via uh, keyword combinations. Basically, we're, we're using keyword combinations to detect the, the type of the event, but also we use statistical classifier for the English language. And we use few pragmatic heuristics which give preference to certain event types over the others. The, why we are, again, why we are working uh, with key co uh, keyword combinations, it is uh, simply because we want to be able to to improve the models incrementally and to correct errors uh, when in people who use our system, they, they want uh, improvement of certain types of errors. Um, since the information which we extracted is, is going public, it is important to be able to correct some errors very fast. So that's why we opted for, for this kind of, uh, for this kind of uh, uh, classification. And uh, if, we, if we go uh, in, into the details, uh, we have an editor to, to build this kind of keyword combinations. Like, for example, if we want to detect a cyber attack, we, we, we have to detect cyber weapon, uh, cyber assault, near launch, it fell victim, strike, target, etc. Uh, these, these words are not inserted uh, they are not uh, they're not inserted completely manually. We have terminology learning system behind all this. And this is important. This is another example which is about humanitarian detection of humanitarian events. Humanitarian events are important because the uh, in the European Commission and in the uh, and, and in the other international organizations, there are uh, many, uh, many bodies who are watching about humanitarian events in order to know where to distribute food, where to distribute help for the people. So they're looking for such kind of information. Um, so in order to, in order to continue, uh, in order to make this whole uh, rule-based mechanism work without, uh, without problems, without uh, without significant errors, we apply, we apply automatic learning of lexica. So we have multilingual weekly supervised lexical learning tool, which is called TMM Terminology Discovery. Uh, the tool uses distributional semantics. The user inserts on the input a handful of seed words which belong to a certain semantic category, and the system finds many more terms which belong to this category. It is, uh, this tool uh, we can it is not completely open source, but we could uh, give it to people who are interested. So if, so you, if you're interested in terminology extraction, you can contact us. For example, if you want to learn a list of uh, weapons, the input seed set can be a pistol, gun, a rifle, and the system expands the small seed set into a big set of words. In this, in this case, handgun, firearm, knife, etc., etc. This is the output of this is the output of our terminology learning algorithm. This is uh, taken from this is screenshot. Um, so I mean, I gave this violent example. I mean, it, it, because the system is to, uh, is working in the domain of the security. Of course, there is no restriction on the terminology. There is no restriction on the language. Important is the system is completely multilingual, uh, and it is multilingual because. 
it is not using any form of language uh, processing, it is not using noun phrase chunking, and it is not using syntactic parsing. It will work for most of the languages which exist in the world. I am not sure about uh, East, Far East languages or, or about, uh, about uh, languages from the Middle East, but for sure the system is uh, working for all the European languages since we have projected it in such a way that it ignores the language specificities of the, of the, lang of the language, clearly this can result in some errors. And our terminology learning requires some form of manual cleaning after that. So all, everything in, 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 in EMM is, 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 is working like this. We use some form of machine learning, then we manually check, and then we uh, produce uh, manually rules which, which are then applied on the news. So uh, we have another algorithm, semi-automatic learning of grammar rules for event extraction. And uh, it is used in order to feed into the, the language grammars, into the domain-specific grammars, uh, rules which are uh, rules which, which, uh, which increase the recall. So the algorithm works like this. We extract domain-specific terminology. Then we find word clusters using distributional similarity, and then we find cluster co-occurrences, like, uh, like this example. So if we automatically extract terms which occur with uh, killed and injured, uh, we have this, uh, these words here, rioting, bomb blast, gunfight, etc., etc. Then uh, extracting terms are clustered using uh, distribution similarity, patterns of cluster co-occurrences are then found inside, inside the news. So we have at the end uh, a rule like this. Troopers, soldiers, militiamen were killed, wounded, dead. Like, for example, troopers were dead. Or all these kind of rules here. And uh, these rules are then given to, the, to our language engineers. And the language engineers, uh, they think if they can put it into the system, or they can merge with already existing rules. So finally, the system is suggesting suggesting new uh, new rules for the for our grammars. More or less, more or less, this is about our language processing engine. We have uh, terminology learning. We have uh, rule-based learning. We have uh, grammar rules. We do not or nearly do not use statistical classifiers currently because we have to correct the errors which are coming out of, which come as requests to improve our system. And I want to say just a couple of words about our medical event extraction. The purpose of this system is to detect disease outbreaks and, uh, and the number of people who are dead and infected during these outbreaks. The system uses grammar rules similar to the ones which I have shown, and uh, it uses extensive list, multilingual list of infectious diseases. The challenge in the medical event extraction is that sometimes in the same news you have more than one event which is described. Um, and currently the system recognizes different temporal expressions in the text and finds the event descriptions which are anchored to those temporal expressions. And in this way, we manage to find different events which are mentioned in the same in the same text, in the same context. So, for example, in this context here, a new important case of measles has been confirmed in the epiphenom. A man tested positive for the virus. The Center for Disease Control said Tuesday. So far this year, there have been 25 confirmed cases of measles infection, the highest recorded number in Taiwan in the last seven years. So we have here two cases. Uh, two st types of statistics. On the one hand, the statistic for this year, and on the other hand, the new case. So the system finds both these mentions and attaches them to the temporal expressions. On the one hand, you have May 22, which is the current date, and on the other hand, you have so far this year, which is another temporal expression. So finally, it exports these two frames, uh, these two medical events, one is about 25 statistics for 2018, and the other one is the one case, the one new case. 
and uh, we do it uh, we do this with uh, tens of diseases I'm, I'm i'm not sure about the the number of the diseases which we're processing but we have extensive list of infectious diseases and we're working with the who and the european centers also with the european centers for disease control so they are our main users of this system Another thing which, uh, which I believe will be useful to, to know is that we are releasing a corpus of the uh, security related events. So we have collected uh, event metadata for the years 2007-2017 and uh, we are making this, uh, this, this data available on, on this address here. You can contact me always for the details. Uh, there are human moderated events which can be used for evaluation and training of the event uh, detection systems. They are sub part of this corpus. And the non moderated events are encompassing the full period between 2007 2017 and then can be used for deriving trends in the political situation of a country. We carried uh, out evaluation uh, mostly for English and accuracy for the event classification was found to be around 70%. Military events are classified with accuracy around 65%. And this is the slot evaluation. Well, the numbers are uh, not really impressive. We can uh, work more, more on them, but currently, currently our priority is uh, the detection of the event type and the detection of the geolocation, simply because People want to know what happened and where it happened. This is the priority. Uh, the metadata is certainly important, but it, it has less importance than the event type and the geolocation. So we are no, now mostly working on, 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 on the improvement of the geolocation and the, and, and, and the event types. Um, so that is what I have to say. Moreover, that's, this is the last talk. I, I have to stop here. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. What, what is sorry? The manpower. How many, yeah. how, how many years did you need to do that? <laughs> I think uh, it is it is okay. more. Yeah. So we have been two people who have been working on the software and on the grammar. There is one person who has developed the in-house grammar engine Express. So these are three men, and uh, we have been working about three, four years uh, in order to come to these to these results, and we still continue to work on that. This is just about event detection. While EMM, we have in EMM, in the whole system, we have uh, six computational linguists and about 10 software engineers. Uh, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Please. So you're government funded and you're analyzing all this news data. A lot of other people in the world are doing this. Is the, uh, the news corpus and the streams of news, are they are these open data? Um, thanks. There is an RSS feed which you can download from our uh, website, but we cannot keep the news for copyright reasons. But you can download the RSS and then you can deal with the copyright. So we, we do have RSS for the news clusters. <laughs> No, I mean, it is, uh, it, it is just we cannot really, because we are big public organizations, we cannot, we cannot really keep news because any, any suspect for, for copyright violation will bring us heavy problems simply because we are funded, as you say, you say we are funded by public money, so we have to be 100% correct, which is impossible in practice, but uh, <laughs> do what, uh, what we can. So you can download from our, uh, from our website. There is an RSS stream of the news clusters.
it, it's really accurate, but what's a recall? Like, how many news articles do you press? Do you have any idea? Um. Thanks. This this question uh, this question is um, well I have measured this on the event detection system so basically I have been searching for the main uh, well main news which contain violent event and then I've been looking at the event detection system how often it captured and then I have found that around seventy percent of the cases we have uh, we, we we we're capturing the events but. Uh, about the news clustering, if we are missing something, this must be an article which is not similar to any other articles. So, if if we if we suppose there is a mi that we are missing an article, this will be an article which is not similar to anyone. So, it will be a singleton. It will not appear in our on our website. And such an article, uh, most probably, uh, most probably is not interesting. And if it is interesting, we don't have still methods to cope with such kind of difficult cases. If there is a new story which appears in just one source, which is possible, I don't say it is not impossible, it, it, it is possible, but we currently do not have uh, methods to, to, to deal with such kind of cases. So recall, we, we didn't measure actually formally, to be honest. So we, as, as I pointed out, we are using statistical methods to, to learn rules, but statistical methods to classify the text, uh, we, still do, we still didn't do that simply because uh, we, we thought it is uh, easier to create rules rather than annotating text. And for sure, making the rules is more interesting <laughs> rather than annotating text. But no, in principle, you're right. Uh, for text classification, of course, Statistical methods are unbeatable, it is proven by the theory. Only that we really wanted to, uh, to stress in this case on the precision and we wanted to be able to correct the errors when there is a feedback. Because some people just don't like to, because there are these, uh, these uh, classes, these categories, not about the event detection system, but, but about the whole EMM, uh, which, which are talking uh, about certain uh, commissioners. And the commissioners say that they do not want to see their name in this, in this context. So we have to cut keywords, we have to put new keywords. So this, this is how it works. This is, this is the reality because we have these political clients and they, they make us uh, work on, on a regular basis. So it would be difficult really to retrain a classifier. But for the event detection system, yeah, I agree. It, 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 it could be our next try to use statistical classification. Any other uh, questions? Please. So you're detecting important things. How do you decide uh, that your data sources are reputable journalistic organizations? This is a very good question. Uh, we are choosing manually our web, uh, our web sources, and uh, the new sources which we are using are usually authoritative ones. Only recently, when starting to work on fake news analysis, we have uh, been working with non-authoritative uh, news sources. So we have another, another parallel version of the, of the Europe Media Monitor, which is working with uh, non-authoritative sources, but this is for uh, the purpose to find fake uh, news. Like uh, in the normal EMM, we just have authoritative uh, sources like CNN, etc. Is, is this your question? Fox News. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a more difficult question, right? 
I, um, we try to be, we try to be, um, we try to follow the mainstream. So if Fox News is mainstream, for us it is good. And uh, I don't think there is a really other answer to this if you are working for the European Commission. If you work for university, you can afford to really estimate the value of a, of a, of a web source according to your convictions. But if you're working for big organizations, we do not have this right. Basically, uh, we, we are, we are, our truth is the truth of the, of the European politicians somehow. And uh, Fox, News is, Fox News is recognized in the United States. So it is used by Republican Party. Republican Party <laughs> has its, its president. So I mean, as far as we are on this side of the of the official news, we must recognize it. We must recognize it. Otherwise, ad but we are also collecting news from Al Jazeera. So it's it's not that we are collecting just news which are uh, you know pro-Western or pro-American or pro-European. We try to keep focus on Europe, but we collect all the types of news, uh, all, all the sources which are not, which are authoritative, which are not uh, yellow, which, 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 which do not spread fake news, which do not spread, spread uh, rumors. Uh, so we work with authoritative sources. Yes, this is this is exactly like this. Um, this is a very good question, by the way. We have started working on social media for uh, two, three years ago, and uh, currently we are scanning Facebook and, and Twitter for um, for information on. First, we started gathering information about technology. Then we started gathering information about certain politicians and about certain topics. And uh, we have a tool which is finding uh, the most important links, hashtags, and the most important users who talk about uh, the different politicians and the, about different topics. So we have, this, uh, we have this tool, but it is not for public use currently, simply because the information is not really very presentable always because on Twitter people write whatever they want so you can imagine what kind of links we can get about certain people <laughs> we do not we show this just to the analysts we do not want to show this public so uh, my answer to your question is yes we go in this direction and work more and more so in Twitter and Facebook but in, in, in both social media So you mentioned at the beginning that 17 million languages are considered. I was wondering how you use the Asian languages. So is there Chinese news being? Yes, yes, we have Chinese, uh, Chinese and Japanese. We we cover, and um, uh, and we're covering also the the Indian language. So we, uh, so we have Ch Chinese uh, and, and Japanese. We're covering uh, Indian language, and. Um, I think you can have a full list of, you can easily see a full list of, uh, of the languages which we cover from, from, our, from our website. You can just open and on, on the right side you have a list of the languages, you can just see all, which are the languages which we cover. But I, I think we cover uh, also the Far East languages, mo most of them, if not all. I'm not sure about Malaysian, and, uh, but I think it is also covered. Any other questions? If not, uh, thank you very much for this. I thank you. <laughs> I thank you very much.